Hey guys, today's video, we're going to be testing these cars on a bunch of different voltages to just see how that affects the car. So we'll be riding um, probably the ET and mile an hour on each box just to kind of see, because my guess is that certain ranges of power, you really aren't going to have a lot of speed difference, but you will have a lot of drivability difference, which on the drag ship doesn't really matter, but this will apply to your road course as well. So first up, we're going to run the four gear car. So this particular four gear has a uh, Viper Razor front end, has the Viper 360 rears and the Viper uh, skinny tires on it. So this obviously is going to run better than standard four gear, but for the sake of the video, we're on 10 volts and we are going to stage it up. We'll make a pass and we'll see what it does. Man, that was snail's pace. So looks like we got 2.06 at 14.75 mile an hour. So I'm going to write that in here, 2.06 and 14.75. Okay, so um, we'll run all three cars at each voltage and then step it up from there. Next up, stock Mega G Plus, nothing special. There is potential at different voltages that some of these run, they might run better than the next car. Whereas in, when you get into the higher voltages, that could flip flop. So kind of curious to see what happens here. So that, that one we had 18 point six nine and we had a uh, 1.52 okay next up is going to be the v-spec which i get questions all the time of like hey you know i have this car what voltage should i run it on and the honest answer is whatever works great on your track and for the most part uh for the most part you don't want to run you know, 30 volts for instance, but you could definitely run lower voltage if your track's smaller and it's not gonna hurt your experience at all. So 1.05 at 27, 36, okay? So we will turn the power up. We're gonna go up two volts. Okay. Jump back to our four gear. Looks like we ran 2.06 at 14.375 last time. Okay, so we definitely did pick up. That's just with two volts. Okay, so um, let's see, 1.6, 1.63 and 17.96. So really the point of this is just to just show that just because your AFX power pack or your wall wart, whatever, had 24 volts, doesn't mean that that's what you have to run your track at. Doesn't mean that's what you have to run your cars at. You run it at whatever, whatever works for you, you know? So 22.43 and 1.29 so kind of moving moving along I know when we um, did a lot of uh, when we did a lot of trade show stuff uh, pre-covid we used to run the tracks with the v-spec cars on uh, we'd run them on like 13 volts and that was on a 14 foot track. It was still plenty fast, um, but what it did was it made it to where the majority of the curves, you, you could go fast through them. So we had a lot of, you know, I mean, every driver was inexperienced. We didn't have any like slot car people running on that. And it made it to where it just had a couple of crash points. It wasn't that every corner was a crash point. Whereas if you put a fast car, like 
a V-Spec, a Tyco 440, a Super G Plus, you put that on a, you know, a stock Tomy layout on full power and it's like, you're just gonna hold the throttle half throttle, you know? So you can run lower power on it and actually get some drive rhythm out of the car. So now we're on 14. You can see on the graph already that, you know, we're increasing that one, 1.3 that time. So, I mean, that dropped like another three tenths. 1.3 at 22. I'm just gonna write the mile an hour. I'm not gonna go into the decimal place, but um, just so that the video is not super long. I don't want you guys getting dizzy watching me go back and forth, but. There is definitely a plateau where, you know, especially when you get up in the higher voltages, I feel like those ones, you, you get a lot less gain. And what you do get though, <clears throat> if you wanted it, is the car <clears throat> is just a lot more reactive and explosive feeling like, and that's great and all, but if you're not, if you're not ready for it, you barely touch the trigger. I mean, because all of these voltages are definitely going to affect how your controller feels as well. So um, you got to keep that in mind too. Okay, three, seven. Okay, so we're still going up. I mean, obviously this graph is going to go up. It's just at the rate at which it increases. You know, we could have done three volts and we probably would have been okay to still demonstrate this but you know if you guys are sticking along with us you'll see each time and we can kind of go back through each car at the end that car literally looks the same to me every time but it's showing it's showing that it's faster right yep. one three so one two this time 1.2 25 Okay. And I know too, I could put the cars on both lanes and run two at the same time. But since we're testing each individual car, we're recording that data individually. We're just going to run them individually. So Mega G plus ran 28 this time. So last time it ran 25, 1.07. So ET and mile an hour still going up which is expected. But yeah, so it'll make the controller, the lower the voltage, the less sensitive the controller is gonna be. Um, so that means you're gonna have like a lot more range. As you go higher in voltage, it's just gonna get more and more touchy. So more like a hair trigger. And you know, some guys, if you might like that, you know, I mean, if you like th the V-Spec, for instance, if you wanted the V-Spec to run like a modified, just turn the voltage up. You know, I mean, we usually tell guys because most racing organizations will run, we're on 18 volts now, which is what our track normally runs on. But um, we'll tell guys voltage wise to run 18 on most inline cars. Uh, that's pretty normal voltage. And they usually ask, well, how much voltage can they handle? And honestly, you know, on a drag strip and stuff, stuff like that, they can handle a lot more voltage. But the question usually is, is for how long, like how long can they handle that voltage? And so, um, that's why I tell guys all the time to play around. I mean, you might be fine running a V-Spec on 14 volts. And if you want it to feel crazy and show off for your buddies, you could turn it up to 18 and they're not going to know the difference other than the way that the car runs, but they're not going to know that. Um, so this time that car actually ran a little bit faster. So not quite a full 10th, but it still did pick up mile an hour. You can see also on 18, the four gear picked up just a smidge. So this is a 16. Um, 
fix that just so that you guys, if you're keeping track of this, you guys can see it. But uh, mile an hour has gone up each time. But but yeah, so if if you wanted to run 14 and then jump it up to 18, it's going to be a big difference. And the guy, your buddies aren't going to know that that's normally what the car should run on. They'll just think, wow, that thing's really fast, you know. So that was 18 on the V-Spec, which should have been like around a 650 or so, 626. Six, two, six at 47. Okay, so that's four volts, 10 mile an hour in 15 feet. So that's, that's a pretty big jump. Um, now we, we probably will skip 20 volts just cause that's kind of an odd one. We're going to jump right to 22. And I know that a lot of, uh, pancakes, you know, a lot of T jets and stuff like that, 22 to 24 volts is pretty normal for those. So. You know, the guys that were watching this at the beginning saying, I run my T-Jets on 24 volts. Well, you know, this, here you go. This is 22. So definitely more RPM. Um, I could hear it humming better. So ran a 957, which that's a pretty good jump. And we ran 33 mile an hour. Okay, so Mega G, same thing. This car, the Tri Power Pack out of the package um, or out of the FX set, I believe it's 22 volts. So this is where these cars are made to run and the controllers that come with them. The reason they're 120 ohm controller is because you need to be able to have a little bit of throttle range there. So 930 at 35. So something that you'll see that's interesting is there was a pretty big split in voltage or uh, sorry, in times down here for, between the mega G and the four gear. But as we've increased voltage, we've got closer and closer and closer. Okay. Which is just kind of something interesting to point out. Um, and that's why I say like different cars on different voltages can behave differently. Okay, so the Viper obviously still picking up time. And I can, I can hear too, I don't know if you can hear it, Sam, but you can definitely hear that the cars are running more RPM. 550, 55, that's kind of a fun number. Huh? Okay, we'll keep going. And if any of these things blow up, we did it for you guys. We did it for YouTube. So 26 volts, this is, I mean, this is way outside of where I would run something, but let's just see what happens. Like I said, if you are trying to make stuff faster and you don't want to spend the money on it, just turn the power up. Yeah, so that thing was zinging pretty good for a four gear. So 820. at 39 okay so let's see if the mega g is tapped out and if this is the crossover point where the mega g gives into the four gear so 820 is what the four gear ran 848 so it ran one more mile an hour barely because i think that that 39 was almost 40 mile an hour but um, you know, from watching this car, one thing that I could see is that because the car has stock wheels and tires on it, it's like, it's like bouncing down the track and the four gear does have Viper parts on it. So it's not an accurate, like this is how all four gears are going to run, but it did show that it did overtake it and that just. Okay, so that's the V-Spec. I mean, that thing went way deep into the shutdown, which these cars usually never go that far into there, but it's just getting big voltage, 488. And 
almost 70 mile an hour. So like, look at that jump and speed right there between the last little bit, you know, it's, it's a big jump. So our last test, we'll go 30 volts. Oops. Even this potentiometer on this thing gets a lot more sensitive as you get up into the higher voltages, but 30 volts. Um, four gear. Let's see what we get. All right. Seven twenty four. So almost a whole tenth and forty five mile an hour. Okay, go Mega G. Okay, so that definitely spun the tire off the starting line, but ran an 820. And we ran 43 mile an hour, so. Once again, I mean, this we're just doing this just to show you guys like comparisons. This isn't to say, oh, the four gears faster or this or that or the other. It's literally just data. And a lot of times when you collect data, it's what you do with that data or what that data means to you that means the most. So that was the V-Spec almost going to the end of the shutdown. And a 445, picked up 10 mile an hour. Okay, so all of them are, are pretty big gains, but just, you know, if you guys want to study these graphs, the V-Spec, we went from right around one second, 27 miles an hour on 10 volts, which if you compare that to 16 volts of the Mega G Plus, that gives you an idea of it takes six more volts to make the Mega G Plus run the same speed, at least on this straight. Like now, if you have corners and stuff in there, it'd be a whole different story. Um, there probably would be a bigger spread there because of the handling characteristics, but you can kind of gauge things like that. You know, like if we jump to the 878 on 12 volts, 878 versus, you know, it took 22 volts to get, probably around 24 volts is where the four gear and the Mega G Plus would have been. Um, but I like looking at things like the Mega G and the four gear where next to each other, they're very, very close. And then there is a transition point right here. And I mean, you could start sending more voltage to them. Like I said, this is only 15 and a half feet long. So you're on the throttle for you know, three quarters of a second. Um, probably not enough to kill the car. What does kill the car is if you're holding the car with the back tires off the ground and you're squeezing the throttle down. Like, do not ever do that with any car. It's one of the dumbest things you could possibly do. And I see avid enthusiasts do it all the time. And it's just, it's horrible for your slot car. It's horrible for your motor, a lot of stuff. It's not good for you. It needs to be under load. So it needs to be on the track doing work, not just saying that, not just yelling, you know, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and hopefully, you know, if you have any questions about the graph or about what we did today and think, oh, well, why this or why that or anything like that, throw it in the comments. We go through, we try to monitor the comments for a couple of weeks on every video so that questions are getting answered. If you do comment and it doesn't get answered, feel free to throw us an email, support at viperscoracing.com. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. We had a lot of fun making it. We'll see you on the next one.